hey, it's the puppets. Hey, Sue, I understand we have a ghost writer for today's puppet show. Well, we did, but unfortunately, we had some problems with the script. Oh, really? What kind of problems? Well, our ghost writer, who is a half-naked little fakir with a bowl of nuts in his lap, made a couple of references that the mommies might get upset with. Oh, can't have that. And YouTube might pull our video. Oh, you got to watch out for those little half-naked fakirs, don't you? Yes, you do. How about that is our word for today? Fakir, F-A-K-I-R. Yes, it means a Middle Eastern holy man who lives on alms, and alms are charity. It used to mean just a Muslim holy man, but now it means a Hindu holy man as well. Yes, and do you know why that is? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. It's because Winston Churchill once called Mahatma Gandhi a half-naked little fakir. Yeah, well, basically, yes, that's a paraphrase, but basically, yes, he did. Winston Churchill was one of the greatest Brits who ever lived, wasn't he? Yes, he was. You know why? Yes, I do. Because he was half American. Yay! Okay, that was our puppet show. Now, oh, little ones, Fakir has to be pronounced very carefully. One small mistake will end you up in the principal's office. So keep that in mind. Fuck here. Good. We had another topic that we were going to get into today, but Etsy has now begun asking sellers to offer free shipping for orders of $35 or more. And that's something that can have an impact on all of us. So we need to discuss it. And we will when we come back. Well, there's been a lot of commotion on YouTube past few days about Etsy's new policy. Uh, they are asking sellers to offer free shipping on any orders totaling $35 or more. Um, I've seen a lot of the videos that have been made by unhappy Etsy sellers. And even though I feel a lot of these videos are undercut by the emotionalism of the sellers, there are some issues that are legitimate. We need to talk about that. First of all, uh, the policy. Etsy is asking that sellers offer free shipping for orders of $35 or more. And if sellers will do this, they will move higher in the search listings. If they do not, Obviously, they will move lower in the search listings. So, is this a request mm, or is it coercion? Um, and I will leave that up to you to decide. Etsy's rationale seems to be that everyone else out there in the world of online selling is offering free shipping, um, especially after you reach a certain threshold. Well, I think the flaw in Etsy's logic is Etsy sellers are small independent craftspersons, vintage sellers, not Walmart, not Amazon, because the companies that pioneered the free shipping are the big boys in town, not little um, independent sellers who are perhaps making a few thousand dollars a year at most. So what's the impact? Well, 
I've done the math. Uh, I took several items at several price points and actually sat down and did uh, a, a legitimate follow through. What is it? What is it costing if the customer pays the shipping? What does it cost if the seller has to assume that responsibility and pay the shipping? Well, for items uh, at around a $10 price point, you're talking about a loss of profit to the seller of about 30%. Now, that loss of profit goes down, yes, dear, that loss of profit goes down as the price of the item goes up because there's more profit to be had and therefore the slice you lose is going to be smaller overall. I decided against sharing the math with you because frankly, it's boring and nobody wants to listen to 20 minutes worth of math, but I've done it and there is no question. Uh, but let's face it, common sense told us going in that there was going to be a loss to the sellers. I have cat hair on me now. Uh, because when the buyer is paying the shipping, it's not coming out of the seller's pocket. If the seller is paying the shipping, it's coming out of the seller's pocket. So what's Essie's response to this? You're going to like this one. It is raise your prices. Now, there are several problems with that. And let's just start with the basics. If you raise your prices, it's not free shipping. Your buyers are not morons. They're going to sort this out. Um, if you have an item that you priced at $10 and you end up raising that price to $13 in order to offer free shipping, they're going to work it out. Is there a choice? No. Once a company starts going down this path, this is where they're going. It will be a voluntary compliance measure to begin with. And eventually it's just going to become a company-wide policy. And right now Etsy is saying, oh, please, please, you do this. We'll raise you in the search listings. If you don't, we're going to leave you lower. Eventually what's going to happen is Etsy will say, this is your policy requirements if you are selling on Etsy, anything over $35 is going to go out free shipping. And you can see this right across the board, especially with past Etsy decisions. Um, so what are we going to do about it? Well, for starters, most small sellers, particularly craft sellers who have small items coming in at low price points are not going to have a choice. They're going to have to raise prices. There's just no way around it. Uh, and that's because if you're selling items at around a $10 price point, people are going to be willing to buy four in order to get the free shipping. It, it works out to a, you know, buy three, get one free. And people buy under those circumstances. So when we have sellers looking down the barrel of a 30 percent loss, something has to give. Um, I have been playing in my own Etsy shop, and, and I've told you this from the beginning, with shipping uh, paid by the buyer and shipping paid by me. I find I sell more when I offer free shipping. I find that for first class items, which can almost always be shipped out for $5 or less, it's very easy to bury at least some part of that cost in the overall price. So that an item I might look at and say, gee, I'd like to blow this out at like $8. I price it at 10 free shipping and yes, it's going to cost me three or $4. So, you know, I've priced it $2 above what I think it should be, but I'm getting $2 below what I think I should. It's just in the nature of things. And it's something you have to do if you want to make sales. 
Um, I think everybody has to make these decisions for themselves. But as I say, I think it is inevitable that we will all eventually be required to do this. So if we're going to be required to offer free shipping for orders over $35, the easiest and least painful way to do it is offer free shipping right across the board. Now, the reason I say this is because for those of us who are dealing in vintage items, shipping two, three, four items in the same box can be a more costly proposition than shipping that same number of items individually. Now, why would I say that? Well, you can ship out a first class item for as little as $2.70. And if you're looking at shipping out four items at about $2.70, you're looking at that same amount of money, um, which is a little over $8, going for a priority package. And if you take four small, fragile items and put them all in the same box, your box is going to be bigger, your box is going to be heavier, you are going to need more packing materials because you must move your items away from one another. Some of them might even have to be boxed within a box to ensure their safety. And if they are breakable, you're going to want to go over to priority shipping because it's only a few cents more than the flat rate ground shipping. And it comes with $50 insurance for free. It just makes sense. Now, I've actually done this myself, um, shipping out multiple items. So I know that even though it may be counterintuitive, it is in fact the truth because four small items at three ounces a piece going into a box, the items by themselves are like 12 ounces. You know, you are going to use another four or five ounces minimally with your larger box and the more abundant packing materials. And then bang, you're right out of that first class shipping and you're into the ground rate or you're into um, the priority shipping. So it just makes sense not to go out of your way to encourage multiple purchases. Multiple purchases are going to be more expensive for you if you have to pay the shipping. And if you're going to have to raise your prices anyway to cover the $35 pre, a free shipping rule, might as well just do it across the board, offer free shipping on everything, then people will buy what they want, free shipping. They will not be putting you in the position of cramming your box full, running the risk of breaking things just so they can get free shipping for $35 or more because they're going to get it anyway. So that's my advice. Let's look at free shipping across the board. I just don't think this $35 is in the interest of vintage resellers because our items are fragile. Now, if we're looking at Etsy crafters, very often their items are not fragile. Very often their items are small and lightweight and in fact might still be able to go out on first class shipping. Um, Lisa from Desert Dragon Works, her pens, because they are small, they are lightweight, she could probably ship five or six pens out. Um, you wrap them carefully, you put them in a box, they're not inherently fragile. You could probably easily get that out at a first class shipping rate. So in her case, it might actually be beneficial to offer free shipping, $35, because the shipping costs for her would be in the range of four or five dollars, but she would get four or five sales in exchange for that. And it would spread the loss out among a broader base of, of product. Um, on the other hand, 
if she is charging for shipping for her items to begin with, which she may be, and I don't know. I haven't actually, I've just sort of pulled Desert Dragon Works off the top of my head because as a result of our giveaway, I'm familiar with her products. It may not be. Uh, one of the Etsy sellers who was extremely vocal on YouTube was someone who made hair scrunchies. And I have to say, I thought about that said so you could put two dozen hair scrunchies in a box and ship it to Timbuktu for five dollars. I'm I'm not sure why that would have been such a, a such a deal killer for her. Clearly it isn't. She's upset about this. One of the other things that Etsy was playing with, and I say playing with because it's been on, it's been off. I don't know where it's going to to settle was not listing shop names in the searches so that when your items come up in the search, it's your item and your number of stars in your review, the description of your item, but no shop name. And that was very alarming to a lot of eBayers or Etsyers, my, my apologies, Etsyers, because they've worked hard to build their shops and build a, a solid reputation for themselves. And they want their buyers to see their shop name and know that, you know, this is a seller I've dealt with. However, it looks like Etsy is backing away from that. Because now if you go into an Etsy search, you do see the shop names. So I have to say, I don't know where they stand with that one but it looks like that's not on the table. Um, but as I say, I'm pretty sure $35 free shipping is here to stay. And we just need to find ways to make it palatable to ourselves because we're probably going to get forced down that road anyway. And as I mentioned with things like returns or damage, if you know you've got to do it, put a smile on your face, it does no good to complain and fuss. Um, Etsy is probably not going to be moved by Etsy seller complaints on this matter. Um, I would also say be cautious in how far you raise your prices. You don't want to raise them too high because that will cost you sales. My suggestion is raise them as high as you need to, to cover the shipping, and then make sure you post prominently on all of your listings, free shipping, all caps. Make sure your buyers know that it's free shipping. Um, and we'll see how this one plays out. Now, we've got a few things that we do need to do in regards to our Etsy shop video. And one of them is we're going to look at three new shops this week. And these are our shops. Um, Amy's Texas Gems, uh, Johan Van Vuren Prints, and Vintage Baby by Gina. Now, all of these shop names are going to be right below the video. I'll put in links so you can get to them. I know some of them, um, boy, some of them I can't even pronounce, I'm sure, let alone, you know, get the spelling correct. So we will get the links so that you don't have to fuss with that in a search engine. Uh, please take a look, give your opinions. Uh, the viewer opinions were very helpful last time. And remember, these are viewers who are asking that we provide some feedback on their shops. So they're looking for this. It's not as if we're just hauling people off Etsy and saying, oh, we're gonna just tell you how we think you ought to run your business. No, these are people who are actively soliciting our feedback. I will make sure you have the links and just give them a look, see if you can. Anything that occurs to you, just write it down in the comments. And again, I've tried to give you a good variety of shops so you're not seeing all the same thing when you look. Um, 
it's and that also uh, eliminates the possibility of comparing one shop to another i don't think these shops are going to be very easily compared to one another because we don't want to fall into the habit of saying well shop one is great but shop two isn't doing what shop one is doing they're all different businesses and they all they all have different products and different approaches so that's how we need to look at them and the feedback last time was excellent so thank you in advance i'm sure all of us are very very grateful for your interest and your willingness to do this now we have something else we have to discuss we have a pen giveaway to deal with and we had four pens we have four winners um lorraine gomez oh by the way i will also post those names below and if you are one of the winners please comment so i can get you your pen uh, Lorraine Gomez is going back to school uh, to finish her degree, and she would like a fancy pen. So, chalk one up for education. Lorraine's getting a pen. Um, the Old Bohemian Gypsy, who is a frequent commenter on this channel, um, she wanted a pen for, I believe it was her neighbor, who is suffering from arthritis, and I thought, oh, that is just so sweet. I'm just so selfless. So she's getting a pen for her neighbor. Also, uh, Renee Stanton, I believe she wanted it for her sister. And she is also getting a pen. So we've got two, you know, chalk it up for charity. Bless your hearts, thinking of others. And we have Kathy Kaler. Kathy is a special ed teacher who wants a pen so that she can use it as a special treat for her students. So if they do well, they get to write out their assignment with a fancy pen. I thought that was just so clever, so motivational. So we have two charity, two education. I think that was a good day's work. Now, for those of you who did not get a pen, boy, have I got more pens. Um, I spoke with Lisa. She is going to continue to make pens for our giveaways and she's going to list them in her shop so we are going to have plenty more pens this video if you want a pen four more pens are going out next week just write it up in the comments four people are going to get pens i'm not even going to put in contest rules because this is just going to be something we're going to do we are going to give away pens until everybody has pens or we've died of old age or you know pens are no longer necessary because we moved into the 22nd century and we're all communicating by telepathy but pens are here to stay and i will post some pictures of the new pens um it's a whole new assortment just really beautiful and We'll see if we can keep this one going because this has been a really, really fun giveaway. Also on the subject of giveaways, uh, Maria Bowser, who had been the second prize winner of our very first giveaway. Um, Maria has gotten her prize. I have photos back from her and I'm going to show you this is this coming up is Maria wearing her prize. And that was a custom piece from Cogsworth Gears to Jewel. That's why it took a little longer because it was a special custom piece. And that was the sort of unanticipated second prize uh, for our Tell Me Something About Your Dad or Muhammad Ali. And that was back in May, that giveaway. So it took a little while, but we got there. Okay, tomorrow we are going to have our project video and um i'm also thinking and i want to hear your comments on this because remember this is for you um i'm also thinking of adding another video every week right now i'm doing videos on saturday and sunday saturday videos which started out as our informational videos have sort of 
morphed into our Etsy shop videos, which is not a bad thing. I think this is a good thing. The Sunday videos have been our projects and repairs and tutorial videos, but now I'm thinking the informational videos are taking a back seat. And my wish list for things I would like to talk about is getting long. And the wish list I am getting from you folks about what you want to uh, what you want to get into, what you'd like to explore, that's getting long too. And I'm not seeing two videos a week accomplishing that. So I've been thinking of adding a third video on Monday mornings. Let me know what you think. Oh, and also some of these videos are just getting ridiculously long too. So what else do we have? Ah, yes. There have been some concerns about background noise. And I do want to address this because um, I, I'm not used to country background noises. I grew up in a city. I now live in, a con in the country. Um, I live in a township. Now, I'm not stupid. I knew there were townships. I just never saw them before. And within that township, I live in a village. I swear, that's what the township calls it, a village, a small cluster of houses, which include my schoolhouse, a former church, a former candy store. I guess at one time it was a village, but it's the 21st century. It shouldn't be a village anymore, but it is. And personally, I always thought of a village as like, you know, you're driving through the countryside in England and you take a wrong turn, which is very easy because they drive on the wrong side of the road to begin with. And, you know, you go down and you come across something called, you know, a little farthing on the muse. And it's an old derelict church and a couple of pubs. And yeah, that's a village. I never thought I would actually be living in a village. I am. But we have our own set of weird noises here. And very recently, one of my neighbors has been tearing up their lawn with a bobcat. Apparently that's what they do in villages. That's, that didn't happen in Boston, I can tell you that. Neighbors did not bring in bobcats. They, you would have to get a permit for something like that, and I'm not sure they'd give you one. And uh, the farmer, who was two doors down, um, has been driving a McCormick harvester up and down the street. And if you have never seen one of those, and believe me, until I moved here, I had never seen one of those. It looks like something out of, uh, like, you know, the Terminator. It's this giant thing with claw. Whoa. Very, very scary farm equipment. And it sounds like the world is coming to an end when it starts rumbling down the road. But I am going to make a concerted effort, even if I have to film these videos at three o'clock in the morning to make sure we can eliminate most of those weird noises. Um, and in fact, three o'clock in the morning, given the weather we've had recently here, it was 97 degrees today, is probably not the world's worst idea. It'd probably be a lot cooler to film at 3 a.m. because of course I have to turn the air conditioning off so that you don't hear that noise too. But trust me, I'm taking your concerns seriously if we can get through this, you know, like the fires of Dante's Inferno summer, we're probably going to be in business. Okay, that's it for today. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.